If you had no past and the rules of this world no longer applied, what would you create? Welcome to Creating Beyond Reality, where your business is your life, your life is your business, and you are the valuable product. The world is changing, my friends, and ease, joy, and glory are available more than ever before. My name is Heather Nichols, and I am so happy you're here. So welcome to Creating Beyond Reality podcast. Um, we are here, we are on Facebook Live, and we've just done a cocktail, we're, we're doing a cocktail chat, and we've just done... Um, We've just made a really yummy drink, and um, now we're starting the talk about sex. Let's talk about sex. Um, So drinks, alcohol, and sex tonight. (laughs) It's a good night. (laughs) It's a good day to be you. Um, And actually, we have here, um, oh my God, Brandy, you're so funny. We have a question that is, how can you contribute to a man to not ejaculate in two seconds? Okay, well, we will talk about that. We will talk about that. I'm not going to start there, but we will get there. Um, And um, so, yeah, and, and, you know, sex is one of those topics that is... um, it's challenging for people, you know, I don't, I know way more people that don't have ease with sex than I do people that do. And, and a lot of times people, you know, maybe they have a little ease with it, but they don't, but like most people have a sense that there's something way greater that's possible with sex. And, um, it's just, it's one of the most judged areas in our world in this reality. Um, it's one of, it's where actually we talk about sexuality. Um, in this world, we think sexuality is this whole universe of, you know, sex and copulation. And, but from an access consciousness point of view, sexuality is actually the judgment that comes with sex. So it's the, the, the point of view that you need to have judgment. I mean, this is a very, not a conscious point of view for most people, but there needs to be a level of judgment to have turn on, um, it's also the decision and the computation of who you will and will not receive from. Um, so there's all these, uh, so many different layers and like interweavings of how sex is very complicated, convoluted, not clear for people. And just this really, this real sense of like not people not having ease with it. One of the things we talk about in the foundation class in access consciousness is, um, the elements of sex. So the, there's energies, there's different energies that go into sex, sex, copulation, sexuality, sexualness, sensuality, and orgasm. And, um, we, and one of the cool, I love the things that I love about that conversation is we actually really, um, we really break down what those things are so that we can have sort of more dynamic and clear conversations and awarenesses about all these different energies of sex without lumping it into one thing called sex. Cause in this reality, people think about sex and it's this one thing and, but everybody has got something different going on with it. Everybody thinks it's something different, but we think we're talking about the same thing, but we're totally not. And there's so many judgments and so many energies and so much separation and so much judgment in this area that it becomes this real, it becomes a challenge. Um, and, and it's part of why people don't have ease with it because there's projections and there's expectations and you expectations that you have of you, of your partner, of any potential partner. Um, and then there's this whole world of awareness that we have and how we interact with bodies and how we interact with our own bodies. And it gets so complicated. And so one of the things that, I mean, and we're, we'll make as much ground as we can make on this tonight. One of the things that is very, um, uh, just very helpful is to actually tease these things apart and go, okay, cool. So sexuality is about the judgments. Sex is about like, it's about being an energy pull. Actually, it's about being the energy of like, like uh, enjoying your body being admired and willing for your body to be admired and adored and, 
and appreciated and feeling like you're looking good and feeling good. It's it, that's what sex is when we look at it from an access point of view. Sexuality, like I said, judgment, sensuality, the body loves to be touched. Copulation, you put the body parts together, you know. Um, sexualness is the space of being. Orgasmic energy is the energy for the creation of life. So there's all these different things that once you have clarity on what, you know, kind of what's going on, <laughs> um, you can actually start to create a different reality with it. Um, and a lot of times somebody had asked about ejaculation, premature or earlier, very rapid ejaculation. A lot of times that is, um, a dynamic awareness or an expectation. Like it could be a lot of judgments and a lot of expectations on the part of the man, but it could also be an intensity of awareness. And I want to play some with that because that's a real, that's one of these places where, um, where we really kind of fuck ourselves over by, um, having so much awareness of bodies, so much awareness of all the sexual activity going on in the world around us, not realizing it and making it ours. And then like lumping and galumping, as we say, like putting it all into this kind of mired, like pile of blah, you know, that we call sex. And then you're like, but it's supposed to feel good. Uh, you know, <laughs> but it doesn't for a lot of people. It doesn't feel good for a lot of people. They really want it to feel good, but it doesn't for a lot of people. Um, it feels good, but they feel guilty about it for a lot of people. They can't even find somebody that would be fun for them or they do. And they, and you know, there's just so many things that happen with this. And, you know, like I said, we'll go as far as we can go tonight with this. Um, and I actually am doing a telecall that starts on Saturday. That's called X-Men and sex, where we're going to really deep dive into this topic. Um, I also have some products on my, sh on my shop about being a sexual healer and, um, private sessions that I do sexual body work sessions. So there's different places to expand the conversation and, you know, what can we play with this evening? So sip of the bevy and then let's go. Um, so, okay. So let's see. Well, first of all, I want to just say that a lot of people, you know, some of you have heard this conversation. Some of you have not. A lot of people are sexual healers. And what does that mean to be a sexual healer? Being a sexual healer means that you, your body has capacities with bodies. You have capacities with bodies and we don't often even realize it. And what happens is we, we, and we have a capacity, it's not just a capacity with bodies, but it's actually a capacity to heal bodies with sexual energy. So using the sexual energy. And when I say sexual energy, I really mean like the energies of being alive. Like the earth has a lot of sexual energy, the energies of sexualness, healing, caring, nurturing, generative, creative, joyful, expansive, orgasmic energies. Um, so there's a lot of energies of being and communion with the earth and embodiment. And, you know, these different energies that are actually sexual energies. If you go beyond the scope of what you think sexual is. And so when you're a sexual healer, you have these capacities to heal bodies with sexual energies. Um, and what happens is a lot of times we kind of go on autopilot to do that. So our bodies actually choose people to have sex with that require healing, but they may not be asking for it. And then we, during copulation and sex, we actually heal their bodies and they're not asking for it. <laughs> and then a lot of times what happens is after a moment like that, you finish having sex and the person goes, Oh my God, that was amazing. That was phenomenal. It feels so good. You know, and you feel like crap, you know, or you wake up the next day and you're like, Oh my God, I feel like a ton of bricks hit me. <laughs> I have never, ever exactly. You know, not of which I speak. I know, I know you. <laughs> um, so, so that's something to really be aware of. And this is a really very liberating conversation for people because when you are a sexual healer, this doesn't mean you go around and you know, whatever. I mean, I, I do sexual body work sessions 
Um, I am a sexual healer. I have a lot of capacities with it, but it's not like a lot of people are sexual healers and they don't even know it. So, and you don't have to know it, you know, but this conversation can give you ease with it. If you realize, if you know, you know, what it is that, um, what goes on. Um, and you can ask different questions because it's like we choose people to have sex with and to copulate with that require healing, but they're not asking for it. And here's the thing is when you give healing, when you heal somebody or you, you know, do sexual healing or whatever. And what I mean by that is just you have sex with them and you heal them while you have sex with them because that's just how you be. Um, is your body the healer uh, in a lot of ways, Nicola, it's it like our bodies have these capacities, you know? And so our bodies just in the act of sex and copulation, our bodies are providing all of this healing energy, nurturing energy, caring and healing energy, um, generative and creative energy. And a lot of times also pulling things out of people's bodies. But when somebody is receiving in a way like receiving healing in such a way that they're not asking for, um, you, they will actually have to reject you and return whatever it is that you've given them. That's beyond what they've asked for and beyond what they're willing to receive with daggers attached. And that doesn't always mean that they're, it's going to be a cognitive or a conscious thing. But a lot of times what happens is there's a rejection or whatever we've given too much. Uh, or we've pulled stuff out of people's bodies and our bodies are like, Ugh. you know, our bodies go, you know, they, they, they're very not happy. So how do you work with that? What do you do with that? Well, for one, acknowledge if, if this reads for you, if you're hearing this and you're going, Oh my God, this makes so much sense, you know? Um, cool. So, okay. So, and you can just perceive the energy right now. Is this light? Does this expand your world? Or is there a sense of like, more like kind of heaviness or contraction? When I ask you the question, are you a sexual healer? And you'll know like first thing, best thing, like yes or no, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not a significance. It's just, if you are, you're going to, well, and either way, you're going to want to ask different questions and you're going to want to ask questions period. Cause our bodies will be drawn to that, which requires healing. That doesn't mean it's going to be a contribution to our bodies necessarily. And when you heal somebody that isn't asking for it, um, it doesn't create more for them either. So it's, it's not like, Oh, well, I'll just take one for the team. No, it doesn't create more for anybody when you do that. Okay. So if you are a sexual healer, um, you want to start asking questions. And even if you're not, you want to start asking questions. And I mean, even if you have a partner, even if you have somebody that you've been having sex with for a long time, you want to ask questions every time. Truth. Will this be easy? Will this be fun? Will I learn something? You know, will this, I don't remember all, there's like a whole list. I don't even remember the whole list, but it's like, will it be easy? Will it be fun? Will I learn something? Will they be grateful afterwards? Will I be grateful afterwards? And will this contribute to my money flows? Um, those are sort of like the basic questions. And then there's other stuff that you can add, like, you know, what will my future be like in five years? What will the world be like in five years? And you're not looking for an answer. You're just looking for the awareness. Um, and if you get the awareness of, nope, there's not going to be gratitude or nope, this is not going to be easy. Nope. This is not going to be fun. Nope. I'm not going to learn something. Then don't do it. Just don't do it. Like it's not worth it because you'll you're asking in advance, basically these questions that are going to give you the awareness of where this is going to go. And you know, I, I would say I, I've had these conversations a lot with people and, um, you're not going to, um, it's not going to go very well. <laughs> Let's just say that. Like if you get a no, I mean, you can go ahead and do it and, and don't give yourself shit. If you do, if you get a no and you do it fine, do it, go have sex with them and just see what happens, you know, but you probably won't have a very generative experience. And then you learn from it and you go, okay, cool. Well, that wasn't so great. You know, maybe I, you know, um, maybe next time I will actually follow my awareness, you know? Um, so that's one thing to do in advance cocktail sip break moment here. <laughs> so 
Okay, so so that's so start with asking questions. Ask more questions, and even if you know these questions and you've heard these questions, you may not ask them every time. Make a commitment now to asking them more, you know, and seeing what you can create. Um, because the thing is, is that we have a lot of awareness. If you're listening to this, you have a lot of awareness. You wouldn't be listening to this if you didn't. You'd be like, who's this crazy Looney Tune lady drinking on Facebook Live? <laughs> um, saying all these words that I don't understand. Um, we have a lot of awareness. And um, we are aware of bodies. We, where are the questions listed? You know, Jody. Mm, well, they're in the foundation. Um, they're in the foundation manual. So I don't think you've taken a foundation class, but if you do, they're there. But I can also send them out um, in the email. We're going to send out an email with the podcast recording. Um, if you guys are on my list, you'll get the questions in the email. You'll get some yummy follow-up stuff. You'll get the PDF of the recipe, the cocktail and stuff. So heathernichols.com slash podcast is how you do that. If you would like to get some of the, you know, cliff notes, shall we say. <laughs> um, so, and Rosie, if you're still watching and you can remind me, that would be awesome. Because <laughs> I'm sure I will forget. Um, okay, so cool. So those are the questions. So know that your body knows and you know. And if it's going to be easy, fun, you're, there's going to be gratitude, you're going to learn something, you know, it's going to increase your money flows, all of that, then go for it, you know. And it may also be that you do it and it might not be like the most orgasmic, phenomenal experience ever, you know, but it may be that something was created from it and you got some awareness and you move on, you know? Um, so it doesn't mean that you're going to have like the most epic sex. And that's another thing I want to speak to here is the expectation piece. Cause this is huge with sex and copulation is the expectations that people have when they go in, even when it's, you know, your partner that you've had sex with for millions of years or, you know, whatever it is. Um, when you go in with expectations, you diminish what you can create. You diminish what you can receive. You diminish the experience that you can have. Expectations will diminish everything. And this applies to every area of life, business, money, every, every, every area of life. Expectations diminish the future rather than expand it. So you want to go in with questions and, and the thing about, and you now here's some really expectations lead to judgment. Yes. Well, yes, they actually are a form of judgment. Um, because anytime you're not in question, you're in judgment, basically. I mean, they're, they're like a, 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 a flavor of judgment. There's lots of different flavors. Um, but, um, but they do lead to, so there's a great book you guys should, I highly, highly recommend reading. It's called Projections, Expectations, Separations, Judgments, and Rejections. It's written by Gary Douglas, who's the founder of Access Consciousness. And um, basically he talks about, it's such a brilliant book. It was a telecall series as well that you can buy on the Access Consciousness um, shop. Um, and he talks about how projections, expectations, and separate, no, projections and expectations lead to, they set you up for, you're going to have to separate, judge, and reject so when you have projections and expectations of anybody or anything, you will, you're guaranteed that at some point, because of those projections and expectations, you will have to separate, judge, and reject. It's, it's a built-in system. <laughs> so it doesn't really create more, you know, to have projections and expectations. So what do you do, you know, instead, so to speak? Um, ask questions, you know. Um, what would it be like? Like what, what, how phenomenal can this be that I can't even imagine? Um, what could this, what could I perceive and receive and learn from this that I can't even imagine? I mean, just play. It's a lot of times people take questions very seriously and they're like, I want to write them down. And you know, you're like, hold on one second before we copulate, I get a, let me get out my list of questions, you know, nah, probably will kill the mood. <laughs> um, so if you take any question into sex with you, let me give you one that's really easy to remember. It's how does it get even better than this? 
<laughs> you could ask that the whole time. And uh, I'm going to tell you it works. It's pretty good. <laughs> it, it will. If you ask how it gets better than this, it will. You know, it's just kind of how it works. <laughs> so if you, you know, because it's not like we're very cognitive when we're having sex, although some people are, which is part of the problem. But let your, let your mind go and be the question and ask the question, how does it get better than this? How does it get better than this? How does it get better than this? There's, and then there's a lot of things that we can do. There's a lot of different, you know, things that we can play with here. But, um, but, um, but you can ask, like, like I asked uh, the other night, total intimate detail here on Facebook Live with my partner that I've been with for nine years. I asked, what would it be like if we had never had sex before? What would this, what would it be like? How could we be with each other's bodies if we had never had sex before tonight? You know, and that was really, really cool. That was really cool. Um, what got created and I didn't even ask it out loud. I just asked it, you know, in my head, you know, um, and it was, it was amazing because the thing is, is that we have reference points for so many things. And when you have a reference point, it's like how it was, how it should be, how it has been before. And even if you've had an epic orgasm, you know, if you have a reference point for that, then you're trying to get back to that. I'm sorry, but it's not, you're never going to have an orgasm like that again. You can have a greater one. <laughs> you can have a more phenomenal one. But if you're trying to get back to, oh, that time when it was so good or that time, whatever, it's not going to work. Um, and so you're going to be, again, that's a projection and an expectation. It's also a reference point. And what you can receive and create is a diminishment. Is a diminishment. So for what reason would you want to diminish when you can expand, when you can have more and greater every time? And we had this meme that was floating around that still is floating around, which was something along the lines of what if sex could be more dynamic and more fun every time, every time you have it and it can, and that doesn't mean that it's, you know, always like fucking epic, you know, but there can be this sense of like, like building and growing, even if it's not with the same person, the sense of you having this exploration of sexual energy it, with your own body a level of intimacy with you, what works for you, what works for your body, what your body enjoys and, um, cultivating that, playing with that, you know, having more of that over time. And it doesn't matter. Like I said, what your partner is doing, or if you have the same partner, it's just, it's you actually cultivating these energies. And I would say, um, and this is something that, um, we'll probably play with more in this telecall coming up because it's a big topic. Um, when we, um, when we have intimacy with ourselves, so we have these beautiful five elements of intimacy and in access consciousness, um, gratitude, allowance, honoring vulnerability and trust. So when we have, and there's a, there's universes of those, those energies really are universes. And when we have those elements with ourselves, with our bodies, we're not in judgment of ourselves or our bodies. We have an honoring of our bodies and ourselves. We have gratitude for our bodies and ourselves. We trust our bodies and ourselves. We are willing to be vulnerable with our bodies and ourselves. It's this amazing space that gets created that you can then start to just really play with. And it's, and then you can, you can, you really can play. You really can be like, this is what works for me. This is what doesn't work for me. Cause one of the things that creates sex as a very, very difficult area for so many people is they're not willing to actually speak to what works for them. And a lot of people don't even know what that is. Like you, so I invite you to begin to explore and ask questions around what is fun for your body, what works for your body. And that's also going to change over time. Our bodies change. They're different all the time. Um, it's not about getting older. It's just about our bodies are different today than they were yesterday, you know? Um, and so your body is going to desire something different today than it did yesterday. And, you know, sometimes that may have a same kind of similar flavor of what you're used to, but sometimes it might be very different, you know? And if you're not in this sort of like with your body and listening to your body and being present with your body 
as you're copulating with somebody, then you're, you're not functioning from what's going on right now. And when you're present with and functioning from what's going on right now, what's going on in my body right now, what is my body desire right now, then you're, it's a setup for disappointment. It's a setup for, you know, failure or whatever you want to call it. It's a setup for not having the kind of sex that you know that you can have. So that's really good. That cocktail. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so, so a huge part of this, I would say really, like if you take anything from this conversation tonight, please take the awareness with you that one of the greatest ways to have more phenomenal sex and copulation is actually to be very, very present with your own body what your body desires, what your body enjoys. Um, and, um, and really like being very present because when you're that and you're willing to ask for it, you're willing to even go, Hey, this doesn't work for me or Hey, can we do something different or can we change it up? Or Hey, I actually need to stop now. You know, I've had some conversations about that with people where they're like, Holy shit. You know, are you willing to stop in the middle? of sex and say, you know what, this doesn't work. I'm sorry, but I can't, I, I need to stop, you know, um, most people aren't willing to do that, you know, but the thing is, is like, it's your body, you know, it's you and your body. And if it's something is happening, that's not working for you. Um, please consider, you know, this as a possibility that there's nobody that's more important than what's true for you. I mean, if you're, if you're like, if you don't want to do what you're doing, if you don't want them to do what they're doing, you want to stop and you're not willing to ask for that because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. You're prioritizing the judgments and the feelings of other people above the honoring of you and the honoring of your body. And that does not work. It doesn't, you're never going to have good sex. if That's where you're functioning from. So if, if you're looking for good sex through that strategy, I would say, give it up right now because it's not going to create that. It's not going to create more for you or for the person that you're with, for your body. It's going to leave you feeling like shit, you know? And, um, so, you know, take a look at that and be willing to make people uncomfortable. You know, if something's not working, be willing to make them uncomfortable. Um, because it's not up to you to take care of people. And sometimes it's just not a good fit. Sometimes you're just not really compatible or, you know, someone's not willing to be tuned in or someone may present themselves in a certain way, but then when you get naked, you know, the judgment comes out or whatever. So there's a lot of different things. Cause the thing is, is that when we take off our clothes and we get naked with somebody, even if it's your partner and someone you've been with for a long time, there's still this like increased level of sensitivity and vulnerability and this sense of like, ah, you know, and that can be wonderful to play with. And it can also be very edgy, you know? And so what would it be like if you could really be the leader in the bedroom of what goes on with you and your body? If you could be the leader, you know, and you could actually be the one who, um, you know, not that you have to be in control because it can be amazing to not be in control. I mean, that's one of the amazing things about very dynamic orgasms is you lose control, you know? The French call it le petit mort, um, the little death, you know, where you, you die a little bit, you know, you, you lose control a little bit or a lot, you know, and that can be really healing. It can be amazing. Um, but it's, you, you gotta like, nobody will, we won't go there if it's not a, if it's not with somebody that's actually where that's actually going to work. Um, your body won't let go like that if the person that you're with is not somebody that you know can hold the space for you, so to speak, for an experience like that. And so you have to, if you're looking to have really phenomenal experiences with sex or even just good sex, you know, <laughs> you got to make sure that you're choosing people that can go there with you, you know, because a lot of people, they just want to like, you know, slam your head through the headboard or, you know, or they want to ejaculate really quickly or they want to just be like, good, go done, you know? So be asking the questions, be asking your body, Hey body, 
you know, who, who would actually be fun. And uh, so often it's, um, it's so much more worth it to not than it is to actually be with somebody that's not going to be a contribution to you. Um, I, I mean, I, I can't imagine that anybody would rather have a terrible sexual experience than just not have sex, you know, um, it's not really worth it. So this is where these questions come in and they're so helpful, you know, um, Dipperati, it seems I have created an end date with sex and relationship after my last relationship ended. How can I change that? Uh, puck and pot it, like use the access consciousness clearing statement. Ever you've decided that you have an end date, destroy it and create. Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, puck, pot, shirts, boys and beyonds. Um, I mean, you don't, you don't have to be at the effect of anything, you know. Um, you don't have to be at the effect of, even if you've decided that there's an end date, it's like, you don't have to be at the effect of it. Just, that's just, a, it's just a projection and an expectation. Um, so destroy and create it. Puck and pod. Everything that allows this to exist, I destroy it and create it. Right, wrong, good, bad, online, puck, pod, shirts, boys, and beyonds. If you don't know what I just said, that is the access consciousness clearing statement. And it's like a delete button for all this unconscious stuff. So, um, cause you're not at the effect of anything. You have total choice, whether you want to admit that to yourself or not, whether you want to have it or not is a thing, you know, but you do have total choice. So what are you going to choose? You know, and this is the thing is we don't realize sex is one of those areas where we really do give up choice and we don't realize that we actually have it, you know, that, that choice is, um, something that it is, it's our primary creative tool, really, if you're willing to have it. Um, and, um, but sex tends to be one of those areas where we really, really give up choice, um, in favor of whatever it is that we've decided that we're going to get from it, you know, and this is another thing you got to start looking at, like, what is it that you've decided that you're going to get from sex? You know, is it a level of caring that you didn't get as a child? Is it a level of nurturing that you've never had in your life? Is it healing with your relationship with one of your parents or, you know, or maybe like uh, the somewhere that you can finally be yourself, but you're not willing to be yourself with you. I mean, there's just universes of where this stuff comes from that limits and inhibits what we can have. And so, you know, start to really play with that and look at that and, and destroy and create anything that's not working for you. The clearing statement is amazing. You don't even have to know what it's about. If you take an access consciousness bars class, um, you will learn about the clearing statement. It's in the manual. You know, you can go to the clearingstatement.com, which I just posted down below. No, Rosie did as me. I'm very, I'm so skilled that I'm posting and typing and talking at the same time. <laughs> um, but, um, thank you for putting that there, Rosie. Um, but you will, um, so the clearingstatement.com for people listening in the future to the podcast, um, and there's a really brilliant video there that describes it. And this can be such a great tool for sex because it's, it, we destroy and uncreate the judgments that we have. And, you know, like I said, in the beginning, sex is one of the most judged areas. So before we finish here, I want to just address one other thing, which I alluded to in the beginning, and we can talk a little about the premi- blah, blah, blah. we can talk a little bit about the premature ejaculation is, um, with this is that a lot of us are really extraordinarily aware. So when you're having sex, you are aware of somebody else. You're aware of like the body that you're having sex with, like dynamically, and you may not know it, but you are, you're also aware of the sexual points of view of everybody in the neighborhood, perhaps in the city, perhaps in the state or the country that you're in, perhaps in the world. <laughs> so when you go into that space, and that energy comes up and you're in that sexual space, all of a sudden you are aware of universes of judgment, limitations, shame, blame, regret, guilt, rage, anger, hate, like, ah, oh, the stuff in our world around sex. Cause it's one of these areas where we do domination and control and powering over and not just from, you know, like the, the, the obvious things, but really 
relationships and sex is one of the areas where we do where we do disempowerment and control of other people kind of the most dynamically. And so, you know, it's really, um, it's, so we become aware of that. You know, you, you step into that space, even if you don't step into that space, you still, you're, you become aware of it. Um, excuse me, I'm going to barf now. All of a sudden. Okay, cool. So I was like, can we please clear this? So everything that is, everything that is, can we please destroy and uncreate it? Everywhere you've made it yours, right? Wrong, good, bad, online, pop, punch, words, boys, and ads. Because the thing is, is if you're one of my favorite tools, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. It's one of the 10 keys to freedom and access consciousness. Get the book. It's an amazing book. Um, if you are being interesting point of view, you're not going to have the need to barf. Like it's, it's, I mean, and we can, you know, there's clearings and all that, but there's a sense of space that you can have with it of like, yeah, there's a lot of limitations out there around sex. There's a lot of, you know, points of view and guess what? It's all made up. It's all made up because what's actually possible with bodies and sex and copulation is so dynamic and beautiful, so much healing and nurturing and caring, such a contribution to the earth, to our bodies, to each other. That's to me, that's what's true about it. That's what's true about this for me is the beautiful energies that are underneath all of this. And, and we give credence to and relevance to the judgments. And that's not, um, judgments are made up. Judgments are not real. So we take this beautiful area of life that can be such a contribution to our bodies, such a contribution to our living, such a contribution to everything we're creating. And we diminish it by believing that, that the judgments are real. So everything that is <clears throat> ever you've made the judgments of sex way more real and true than what, you know, will you destroy and uncreate that right? Wrong, good, bad, all name, pock, punch, hurts, boys, and beyonds. And, um, and so, so we have this huge awareness. I adore you too, Alva. Can't wait to see you next week. Yay. Um, Alba is going to be my roomie in Costa Rica. I'm so excited. Um, so, so we have, so we have this huge awareness, a lot of us. And this is where, you know, this, this telecall that I'm doing that starts on Saturday, it's called X-Men and sex. And X-Men is a whole other topic in a way of where we have mega awareness. And we don't realize that how aware we are, how many, like a simultaneity of awareness of past, present and future and all the bodies and all the people in the earth and multiverses and like all of this, like huge exponentialized awareness. When you put that in a setting, when you have like an X-Men capacity, um, and you put that in a setting where now you're naked and you're touching somebody's body. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that is fucking intense for a lot of people and not in a good way. Um, so now all of a sudden, not only are you aware of all the bodies, 8 million miles in all directions, but now you're actually like naked with one and touching one. Ah, you know? Um, and that's what happens with a lot of people is it's like, holy shit, like this is intense. I can't handle it. It's too much. You might have an intensity of orgasmic energy. That's too much for you. You might have a sense of like of healing this body that you don't quite know what to do with. You don't maybe know what, how to handle it or whatever. So there's so many places and spaces that we go to. We don't realize that it's just our awareness. It's just our awareness of what's going on in somebody's world. It's not ours. It's not something we have to do anything with. It's just our awareness. And when we recognize that and we, we, you know, there's a lot of tools, there's a lot of tools and we will play with a lot of tools in these calls, um, for having greater ease. And I've given you a million today too, just all the questions and all of that stuff. So many tools that you got to Don't leave your tools at the bedroom door. You know, don't leave your tools at the bedroom door when you go to have sex because your tools are even more important in a way when you're in that situation. And it doesn't mean that you're sitting there spinning your head and going, ah, da, 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 what's the tool? What's the tool? But it's more this space of 
you can be dynamically engaged with another body with no point of view, which is an X-Men capacity to really not have a point of view with a sense of total space, a sense of dynamic aliveness in your body, mega capacities in your body, orgasmic energy, capacity to change and heal and shift and all of that stuff. Um, you bring that to the bedroom and holy crap, what gets created and what you can be with another body, what you can change with another body. And especially if that body is willing and it doesn't mean that you're sitting there talking and going, we're healing each other now, you know, cause you don't even have to have a conversation about this, but if you are, so here's where it gets really delicious is if you're a sexual healer and you're having sex with somebody who's a sexual healer, who's willing to be a sexual healer. Wow. Wow. What you can create is phenomenal, phenomenal. And you have those five elements of intimacy, honoring, gratitude, allowance, vulnerability, trust. You have, you know, all these different, like you have a clarity of what works for your body. You're present with your body. You don't have an agenda. You don't have projections and expectations. You don't need it to go anywhere. My friend, Susanna Mittermeier talks about, we did some classes together called sex and the single woman. And she was talking about sex with no future. So you're playing with another body and literally having no future, meaning like there's no future, even a minute from now, you could stop this just because you're kissing. Doesn't mean you're going to copulate just because you don't have any clothes on. Doesn't mean you're going to copulate, you know, so sex with no like play body play with no future, no agenda, no need, no future. And when you can do that, wow. You know, cause then it's just like, Oh, what about now? Oh, what about now? Oh, how does it get better than this? You know, what about now? What about now? What about now? And there's this amazing space that gets created. And like I said, you don't have to be telling the person that you're having sex with about this, but you can be asking these questions and playing with these spaces and these tools in your own world. And if you're willing to be the leader of things and you're willing to really like have these energies reverberating through your world, through your body, through their world, through their body. Wow. What you can create. And what if it never, ever was, what if whether or not you actually copulate is not even a thing, you know? Um, it's like bodies love to play with other bodies. They do. Our bodies love to play with other bodies. So maybe you play, you know, maybe you get out of the judgments of you and other people, maybe you do have an increased space of vulnerability and lowering your barriers and you play, you play and you play as a child would with an exploration and a curiosity and a sense of wonder, no need, no expectation, no projections, no need to have the most dynamic orgasm. And to address the question about the premature ejaculation, a lot of times that's actually, um, you know, part of what goes on with that is all these expectations and projections and all these, all these energies, you know, of, um, truly like, you know, just the, like the awareness and the pressure and the, you know, and then it's like, bah, you know, um, so a lot of times it's just that. Now, if you're with somebody who's having that going on, if they're willing to have a different conversation, like if they're willing to explore this, you could talk to them about it, but you can also move energy in the body. You can move because sometimes what happens is the energy gets so concentrated, um, that it, you know, kind of only has one word at one place to go. Um, so you can actually move it in the, you can just play with your energetic capacities move the orgasmic, like the buildup of pleasure in the orgasmic energy in, so in a man's body, I would say specifically, but you could do this in your own, or if you're a man, you can do it with a woman. Although women tend to, well, it depends. I, I won't even go there. There's a lot, there's a lot we can talk about with that, but you can move the energy. Um, you can sort of move it up and back and spread it out, um, in the man's body. Um, and then there's a lot of, there's a lot of tantric practices that men can do. There's a whole microcosmic orbit where they can kind of circulate the energy that tends to work like just like actually moving it up 
and like circulating it. Um, that's a Taoist practice. Um, but, um, so there's a lot and there's, you know, Tantra books and Taoist books. Um, what's his name? Um, Montauk Chia has some great stuff about that. Um, Charles Muir, Caroline Muir, and those were two of my Tantra teachers. They're amazing. They've written some books. So if you want more information about that, but, um, but, but just move the energy. If you feel it building, move it up and out and back and dissipate it, spread it out, spread it out in their body, spread it out in the universe. And that can make a huge difference. Um, so, so there's a lot, I, I, there's a lot of techniques. There's a lot of information about orgasms and genitals and body parts and all that stuff that I also have from all the Tantra that I studied. I'm not going to do that on Facebook live, not really an appropriate place for that. Um, if you would like more, we are having this telecall that starts on Saturday, X-Men and sex, and we will go wherever you desire to go. Um, it is an X-Men class. So we will be talking about X-Men, you know, different aspects of being an X-Men and having, you know, mega awareness and capacities with bodies and all that stuff. Um, and then really looking at, you know, the area of sex and what else can we create? What difference can we create there? Um, and I'm happy to bring in some of these very informational pieces that can really contribute to a greater awareness and just greater play on your part with what, what you're doing in the bedroom. Um, cause there's some really awesome techniques out there that are fun, you know, and fun to play with and, and create something really different. And when you're an X-Men, you, you have some, you really do have mega capacities with bodies and with awareness and energy. So we will play with that. Um, and you are so very invited to come. Um, if you're hearing this after the fact, it will still be available in my shop, but, um, for you guys on live, we've got this, um, today's Thursday, the call starts on Saturday. It's a three part call Saturday. I think it's Saturday, Tuesday and Wednesday or something like that. Um, and, um, it's the, the link for it is heathernichols.com slash X men sex, X M E N S E X, X men sex. And that will take you to the page. If you do live elsewhere in the world, um, there is access consciousness, global pricing. So if you live in an 80 or a 65% country, there's coupon codes and that's all, um, you know, you can, if you don't know where you, if you don't know what country, like where, how the global pricing applies, um, feel free to send us an email, um, info at heathernichols.com and we can let you know, but um, India is a 65% country. I can't remember all of them. I know India is one. And then there are a lot of 80% countries and there's 100% countries, blah, blah, blah. I don't know all the details, but we can find out for you. So heathernichols.com slash X-Men sex is where you can go. If you'd like to join us for those calls, it's going to be epic. It's going to be really, I've never done this particular series before. Um, I've done some calls on being a sexual healer. That stuff is in my shop as well. Um, and then I do off also do bo sexual body work sessions, which are absolutely phenomenal. Um, really life-changing for people. One of the greatest, um, kind of reports that I get from those sessions is people getting out of judgment of their bodies, which is like, holy crap, how does it get better than that? Um, and so those are very much in person, hands on sessions. Um, if we're going to be somewhere in the same place. Um, at a class together or something like that. Um, I'm going to be in Costa Rica for the facilitator class coming up next week and also the seven day in October. So those are some places where you can find me for those sessions. Um, you can ask me about it. Um, they're pretty amazing. So I think that's good for now. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us. We will do another one of these babies in a couple of weeks. I'm doing two a month. Um, Facebook live podcast, um, recordings. The next one is not going to be a cocktail chat. Um, it's going to be on the topic of business. I don't know exactly. Um, if you have any requests, feel free to shoot me a note. Um, and we can look at where we'd like to go with this topic. It's going to be two weeks from two weeks from tomorrow, um, in the middle of the day. And, you know, I like drinking cocktails in the evening. So, <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's a Europe friendly time, the next one. We'll let you know about it. So get, sign up for my list, heathernichols.com slash podcast. Um, please do me a favor and go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. Um, then I can go live on YouTube as well as Facebook. Um, if you go to YouTube, search Heather K. Nichols. Um, I think there's a link in here somewhere too, but Heather K. Nichols on YouTube and hit subscribe. That would be awesome. And, um, like, and follow my, my page here, Heather Nichols CF. Thank you guys so much for being here and, uh, truly what is possible with sex copulation and sexual energy that we have never, ever, ever considered before. And, um, a very, very fun and amazing area to explore when we are willing to get out of judgment and actually have something very different. So thanks for you. Thanks for being here and I'll catch you next time. Bye everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for yet another epic conversation. I hope you have a most phenomenal week and I look forward to being with you again next time to stay in the loop for future shows Make sure you like and follow our Creating Beyond Reality Facebook page, as well as sign up for our newsletter at heathernichols.com forward slash podcast. See you next time.